It's Miranda. In an effort to attempt some scary stuff this month, things are not working the way I'm hoping. They never do. But I've had this game since last year, and even though I'm familiar with HP Lovecraft, I don't really know HP Lovecraft. So hopefully this will surprise me in some way, but um, I'm not sure how to pronounce if it's Dagon or Dagon, but I'm going to say it's Dagon. I think there's narration in this game, so it'll correct me. Okay, so Dagon is a faithful interactive adaptation of H.P. Lovecraft's work focused on story and atmosphere. You will not find difficult choices, action sequences, or inventory management here, and movement is limited to progressing through locations along with the plot. Okay. Okay, so it's just a story game. Fine by me. I am writing this under an appreciable mental strain, since by tonight I shall be no more. I immediately had control, I didn't realize. Okay, and there was narration immediately, so... So the mouse wheel doesn't do anything. Right mouse zooms in. Penniless, and at the end of my supply of the drug which alone makes life endurable, I can bear the torture no longer and shall cast myself from this garret window into the squalid street below. Okay, so you're into whatever this is. Can I... Can I walk or do I just look around? I was going to say right mouse allows you to zoom in, but it looks like left... Uh, clicks on things, and I don't have a pointer anymore. Do not think from my slavery to morphine that I am a weakling or a degenerate. Morphine. When you have read these hastily scrawled pages, you may guess, though never fully realize, why it is that I must have forgetfulness or death. Okay, so I can only click on... Morphine entered into use in the 19th century and was routinely administered to treat severe pain during the American Civil War, 1861-1865, and World War I, 1914-1918. It was also sold without restrictions until 1914. Morphine became more popular after the invention of the hypodermic syringe around 1854. Friedrich Sturner, I'm probably saying that incorrectly, who first isolated the substance, originally named it Morphium, after Morpheus, the Greek god associated with dreams. At the time when Dagon was published, morphine abuse, known as soldier's disease, already posed a big problem in the United States. Um, a fun but not so fun fact, uh, in my car accident in the early 2000s, when they gave me morphine for my broken pelvis, I right away, the difference in no pain and pain just scared the crap out of me and I wanted to get off of that as quickly as possible and left the hospital on Tylenol. You can read the Discovery Trivia immediately or go back to them later in the main menu. Turn off displaying trivia if you find that the feature distracts you from the story. This can be changed anytime in the options. For sake of time, if you enjoy trivia, I recommend you get this game. I got it, it was free. I think there's extra stuff and you can get a f different version, but yeah, it's on Steam. I'll try to remember to put the link in the description. I forget. I'm gonna uncheck that. Okay, so that means it won't do that anymore, probably. Okay, so this is the only place I can look. Like it said, limited. Up, left, right, okay. So it's the same as doing that with my mouse. And was doesn't do anything. Space doesn't do anything. Okay, so I have to click on the things. All right. It was in one of the most open and least frequented parts of the broad Pacific that the packet of which I was supercargo fell a victim to the German sea raider. I'm sorry. This is the problem with my association brain, with something like this, because I immediately saw this, heard the huh, and thought, Edith Finch. It's a completely different game. Is there anything else? The 
Great War was then at its very beginning, and the ocean forces of the Hun had not completely sunk to their later degradation. I don't always appreciate this stuff because a lot of time I've seen somebody else play it first. And I'm just trying to share it. But I haven't seen anybody play this. I should sh I should have said that. This is a blind playthrough for the first time in a while. So that our vessel was made a legitimate prize whilst we of her crew were treated with all the fairness and consideration due us as naval prisoners. Ooh. I wonder if you can really follow like Arct Arcturus and Deneb and all that stuff. Stars. Oh, I should have clicked on the flag. I noticed that after. So liberal, indeed, was the discipline of our captors that five days after we were taken, I managed to escape alone in a small boat with water and provisions for a good length of time. I guess I can't go back, huh? That's okay. Make sure I look around a little bit more. It's a bad move. When I finally found myself adrift and free, I had but little idea of my surroundings. Never a competent navigator, I could only guess vaguely by the sun and stars that I was somewhat south of the equator. Ooh. Wow. Ooh. Oh, I can go all around. Of the longitude, I knew nothing, and no island or coastline was in sight. Oh. It's so pretty. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. The weather kept fair, and for uncounted days I drifted aimlessly beneath the scorching sun, waiting either for some passing ship or to be cast on the shores of some habitable land. Yeah, this has got to be rough. I mean, and I'm a good swimmer and this would freak me out. Why wouldn't it? Okay, we have that. Okay. But neither ship nor land appeared, and I began to despair in my solitude upon the heaving vastness of unbroken blue. Oh, I'm just looking up now. Waiting for something to happen, probably. The change happened whilst I slept. Its details I shall never know. For my slumber, though troubled and dream infested, was continuous. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd be freaked out. You know, the octopus-like things. When at last I awoke, it was to discover myself -like. half sucked into a slimy expanse of hellish black mire, which mire. extended about me in monotonous undulations as far as I could see. Yeah. Hellish black mire, that's a good way to put that. With squid-like projections. And in which my boat lay grounded some distance away. Mm -hmm. So you're just in the mire. That's comforting. Yeah, I didn't take note of that. I saw that structure and my brain didn't put that together for oh, a sec. I might well imagine that my first sensation mm -hmm. would be of wonder at so prodigious and unexpected a transformation of scenery. 
I was in reality more horrified than astonished. Yeah. For there was in the air and in the rotting soil a sinister quality which chilled me to the very core. Okay. The region was putrid with the carcasses of decaying fish and of other less describable things which I saw protruding from the nasty mud of the unending plain. Yeah, I'm seeing. Weird spirals and tentacles. Perhaps I should not hope to convey in mere words the unutterable hideousness that can dwell in absolute silence and barren immensity. There was nothing within hearing and nothing in sight save a vast reach of black slime. Yet the very completeness of the stillness and the homogeneity of the landscape oppressed me with a nauseating fear. So many legs. I didn't know if it was my microphone, I mean my headphones, or if it was the sound design. There's that little flutter, that little flutter that was like very reminiscent of like a bug. But I, then it stopped. The sun was blazing down from a sky which seemed to me almost black in its cloudless cruelty. Yeah. As though reflecting the inky marsh beneath my feet. Pretty terrible. As I crawled into the stranded boat, I realized that only one theory could explain my position. Poor fish. Uh... Only one theory could explain this? Is it... There's that thing. Is it gonna be, like... Insanity? Through some unprecedented volcanic upheaval, a portion of the ocean floor must have been thrown to the surface. Exposing regions for which innumerable millions of years had lain hidden under unfathomable watery depths. Wouldn't that involve some sort of heat that would absolutely have killed you? Along with the fish. And those things that are moving would not be moving. They would be dead. Also, that that's weirder than the rest of the stuff. That looks like just like the sludge that happens when people just don't throw their oil out proper ways so great was the extent of the new land which had risen beneath me that i could not detect the faintest noise of the surging ocean straining my ears as i might nor were there any sea fowl to prey upon the dead things yeah they're gone yeah well i don't blame the sea fowl for not wanting to be near this stuff i mean Ick. Okay, dead fish. All right, that's it. For several hours, I sat thinking or brooding in the boat, which lay upon its side and afforded a slight shade as the sun moved across the heavens. What's that? Is that above my boat? Oh, it's right there. Hey. So I'm just, yeah, the, the, the little shade on this black mire sludge stuff while something from Bug Island and dead fish and shrimpy parasites. I don't know what that is. As the day progressed, the ground lost some of its stickiness and seemed likely to dry sufficiently for traveling purposes in a short time. To where? <laughs> you couldn't even navigate in the boat. All right. I mean, that night I what slept can you do? Little, and the next day I made for myself a pack containing food and water, what preparatory to an overland journey in search of the vanished sea and possible rescue. I mean, what else can you do, right? Grab a pack. On the third morning, I found the soil dry enough to walk upon with ease. I'm gonna do it. The odor of the fish was maddening, 
but I was too much concerned with graver things to mind so slight an evil, and set out boldly for an unknown goal. Stinky fish. Here we go. All day I forged steadily westward, guided huh. by a faraway hummock which rose higher than any other elevation on the rolling desert. The horrors. Far away hummock. I'm sorry. I have a phone. Let's look up hummock. Not to be confused with hammock. Hummock. A, a hillock. Knoll or mound. So a hill. That thing. Okay, so. Horrors. which are too ambiguous to know. To know them would cause more insanity. Something like that, right? Yeah. Bug-like creatures. Bugs and Geiger and things and, well, this is bugs. This is, this is like, this looks like lobster, you know, like take a thing and just crack it. That's what it looks like. Except black and white. It could even look like the claw. That you can, you know. Well, anyway. Just walk towards that hummock. That night, I encamped. And on the following day, still traveled toward the hummock. Though that object seemed scarcely nearer than when I had first espied it. You're right, but it does look a little taller. Um, I mean, on on the plus side, the sky looks lovely. These strange worm snake-like protrusions from the ground. Not so fun. Not not very tempting. By the fourth evening, I attained the base of the mound which turned out to be much higher than it had appeared from a distance. Like I said, it got taller. An intervening valley setting it out in sharper relief from the general surface. Okay. You're right, it does make it look taller. These flowery words. I love them, but I'm just like shortening it in my head. Too weary to ascend, I slept in the shadow of the hill. Well, what are you gonna send for anyway? What do you like? You think something? You're gonna go up there and just be like, "Hey!" Just wondering. I know not why my dreams were so wild that night. It's the hammock. It listens. But ere the waning and fantastically gibbous moon had risen far above the eastern plain. Flowery words. I was awake in a cold perspiration, determined to sleep no more. Okay. Is the hummock behind you? Is this is what's happening? Such visions as I had experienced were too much for me to endure again. And in the glow of the moon, I saw how unwise I had been to travel by day. Without the glare of the parching sun, my journey would have cost me less energy. Indeed, I now felt quite able to perform the ascent which had deterred me at sunset. Oh. But you can't see as well. Is, is that going to be okay? You want to grab your pack? Picking up my pack, I started for the crest of the eminence. Is there anything else? No? Let's pick up the pack. I have said that the unbroken monotony of the rolling plain was a source of vague horror to me. I mean, yeah, it's like, where do you go? But I think my horror was greater when I gained the summit of the mound and looked down the other side into an immeasurable pit or canyon. Sounds comfy. Whose black recesses the moon had not yet soared high enough to illumine.
So after he climbed, it was so deep that he couldn't see the bottom. I felt myself on the edge of the world. Peering over the rim into a fathomless chaos of eternal night. Did it look back at you? Through my terror ran curious reminiscences of Paradise Lost. Is that another... Should I know that? And of Satan's hideous climb through the unfashioned realms of darkness. As the moon climbed higher in the sky, I began to see that the slopes of the valley were not quite so perpendicular as I had imagined. Ledges and outcroppings of rock afforded fairly easy footholds for a descent. So we went all the way up to go back down when you Maybe you could have just gone to the valley around the side. But maybe this is symbolic and I'm missing it. Whilst after a drop of only a few hundred feet, the declivity became very gradual. Declivity. I've never heard that. I'm assuming it's another word for like decline. Urged on by an impulse which I cannot definitely analyze, I scrambled with difficulty down the rocks and stood on the gentler slope beneath. Gazing into the Stygian deeps, where no light had yet penetrated. Stygian. All at once, my attention was captured by a vast and singular object on the opposite slope which rose steeply about a hundred yards ahead of me. Is it the Borg? I'm sorry. It doesn't even look like it. An object that gleamed whitely in the newly bestowed rays of the ascending moon. I'm walking here, huh? it was merely a gigantic piece of stone, I soon assured myself. Or is it flesh? But I was conscious of a distinct impression that its contour and position were not altogether the work of nature. A closer scrutiny filled me with sensations I cannot express. Well... Then you shouldn't have gotten closer. For despite its enormous magnitude and its position in an abyss which had yawned at the bottom of the sea since the world was young, I perceived beyond a doubt that the strange object was a well-shaped monolith. Yeah. Whose massive bulk had known the workmanship and perhaps the worship of living and thinking creatures. Got it. Dazed and frightened, Yet not without a certain thrill of the scientist's or archaeologist's delight, I examined my surroundings more closely. So is this like supposed to be a place of worship? Like that and does everything have meaning? I wonder. Zenith shone weirdly and vividly above the towering steeps that hemmed in the chasm. Is that the same shaped rock I just saw that I pointed? It looks very similar. Is that a person? Are those people's heads? Like, are those fish atop that? Like, are they trying to say there's people underneath what I just saw? I'm just totally guessing. I have no idea what I'm looking at. Let me see what it tells me. 
and revealed the fact that a far-flung body of water flowed at the bottom, winding out of sight in both directions and almost lapping mm -hmm. my feet as I stood on the slope. Yeah, very oily looking water. Is that just me? It looks a little oily. I hope I haven't bumped into this mic too many times. I'm sorry. I'm totally taking you out of this, aren't I? Just, I'm... Ooh. Jump scares might startle me, but like I don't I just don't get scared. Across the chasm, the wavelets washed the base of the Cyclopean monolith. On whose surface I could now trace both inscriptions and crude sculptures. I don't see the sculptures. Are there sculptures? We're gonna see that I'm just okay. The writing was in a system of hieroglyphics unknown to me, and unlike anything I'd ever seen in books. It is fish. But there is that Cthulhu. Consisting for the most part of conventionalized aquatic symbols such as fishes, eels, octopi, crustaceans, mollusks, whales, and the like. Several characters obviously represented marine things which are unknown to the modern world. You mean like the things you just saw sprouting from the ground? But whose decomposing forms I had observed on the ocean-risen plain. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was gonna say, you're not gonna make the comparison. <laughs> it was the pictorial carving, however, that did most to hold me spellbound. Yeah? The Cthulhu? Oh, is this a trivia? Oh, is that just a collectible? Plainly visible across the intervening water, on account of their enormous size, were an array of bas reliefs whose subjects would have excited the envy of a Doré. Okay. I think that these things were supposed to depict men, at least a certain sort of men. Like mermen. Though the creatures were shown disporting like fishes in the waters of some marine grotto. Creatures. Or paying homage at some monolithic shrine, which appeared to be under the waves as well. So, are you saying that what you thought was the water, something pushing out of the water, this is just going to be a guess, I don't know, was really the water going down so low that you're getting down to this point? Like, you're getting under the sea, like, that's what I'm guessing, like, the water just... And this is this, you know, because the monolith was underwater. Is that wrong? Maybe it's wrong. Let's see what happens. Of their faces and forms, I dare not speak in detail. For the mere remembrance makes me grow faint. Grotesque beyond the imagination of a Poe or a Bulwer. Again, I'm sorry. This is my brain. Your brain might do this too. The description is like, well, really? But then you see it and you're like, they're all right. Like, they're not that grotesque just because it's like you can't visually draw something that grotesque. You're not supposed to be able to draw something that grotesque. You know what I mean? It's because it's in your, because it's supposed to be so horrific, you can't draw it. And, you know, that's all I'm saying. That's the reason why sometimes this is hard for me to get scared by. They were damnable human in general outline, despite webbed hands and feet, shockingly wide and flabby lips. Glassy, bulging eyes, and other features less pleasant to recall. Curiously enough, they seem to have been chiseled badly out of proportion with their scenic background. For one of the creatures was shown in the act of killing a whale, represented as but little larger than himself. Mm-hmm. I remarked... As I say, their grotesqueness and strange size. 
but in a moment decided that they were merely the imaginary gods of some primitive fishing or seafaring tribe. Well, that means they're real. Got it. Some tribe whose last descendant had perished eras before the first ancestor of the Piltdown or Neanderthal man was born. Awestruck at this unexpected glimpse into a past beyond the conception of the most daring anthropologist. I'm saying, like, does that mean the water went down? Like, is that where the ocean is supposed to be up there? That's what I'm thinking. I stood musing whilst the moon cast queer reflections on the silent channel before me. Then, suddenly, I saw it. What? That? Oh, something coming out of the water? With only a slight churning to mark its rise to the surface, the thing slid into view above the dark waters. Oh, what's coming? Do I have to click for it to come or is it gonna come? I'm gonna click. Last, polyphemus like and loathsome. It darted like a stupendous monster of nightmares to the monolith. Okay. About which it flung its gigantic scaly arms, the while it bowed its hideous head and gave vent to certain measured sounds. And I, I lost. I went mad then. Yeah. You can't see stuff like that. frantic ascent of the slope and cliff and of my delirious journey back to the stranded boat I remember little I believe I sang a great deal and laughed oddly when I was unable to sing we're going back the way we came, I think. I have indistinct recollections of a great storm sometime after I reached the boat. At any rate, I know that I heard pearls of thunder and other tones which nature utters only in her wildest moods. We're just going back the way we came, back to the boat, after that big climb that he doesn't remember. When I came out of the shadows, I was in a San Francisco hospital. Righto. Brought thither by the captain of the American ship which had picked up my boat in mid-ocean. In my delirium, I had said much but found that my words had been given scant attention. Yeah, they probably thought you were nuts. Okay, nothing to see here. I forget to zoom in on things. Wish I could read that. Of any land upheaval in the Pacific, my rescuers knew nothing. Nor did I deem it necessary to insist upon a thing which I knew they could not believe. Totally forgot about zooming in this whole time. Oh, well, there you go. Oh, it's a trivia thing. Got it. Once I sought out a celebrated ethnologist and amused him with peculiar questions regarding the ancient Philistine legend of Dagon, the fish god. Dagon. Good, I'm glad I selected correctly. Dagon. Lots of information. But 
soon perceiving that he was hopelessly conventional, I did not press my inquiries. He was like, <laughs> sure, fish god, cool. I can turn all the way around for some reason. Necronomicon, really? Oh, well. What's that about? Is that a collectible? Is that something I should have been able to get? Oh, probably missed so much of that. Up oh, like this. Was I supposed to be doing that? Oops. Okay, I can't turn any more than that. Okay. It is at night, especially when the moon is gibbous and waning, that I see the thing. Oh, so you're still seeing it. Cool. Do we have any more dings? I'm excited now that I didn't know to look for I them. Tried morphine, but the drug has given only transient surcease and has drawn me into its clutches as a hopeless slave. So now. I am to end it all, having written a full account for the information or the contemptuous amusement of my fellow men. Um, no leaps to find? No? Oh. That's it, huh? All right. Often, I ask myself if it could not all have been a pure phantasm. A mere freak of fever as I lay sun-stricken and raving in the open boat after my escape from the German man of war. I mean, that's what I thought. This I ask myself, but ever does there come before me a hideously vivid vision in reply. Jeez. I cannot think of the deep sea without shuddering at the nameless things that may at this very moment be crawling and floundering on its slimy bed. Worshipping their ancient stone idols and carving their own detestable likenesses on submarine obelisks of water-soaked granite. I dream of a day when they may rise above the billows to drag down into their reeking talons the remnants of puny, war-exhausted mankind. Of a day when the land shall sink and the dark ocean shall ascend amidst universal pandemonium. Checking if I clip on anything. Maybe I have to continue the story first. I hear a noise at the door, as of some immense slippery body lumbering against it. Yeah, I hear that. Doesn't seem cool. It 
It shall not find me. But this room doesn't look very big, dude. Dude. Tentacles. God, that hand. The window. The window. You want me to look now? Guess I rushed to the window. I guess that's that's what he had to do. Thank you for joining me on Dagon, and I'm sorry if I didn't make that scary. Like I said, I don't get scared very easily. There's so many people playing these games, I guess you have to have a different style somehow, huh? Someone who just doesn't get scared. Um. Bye.